Hello everyone, it's really nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in today. I had hoped to have a new video for you, but it rained constantly last week and it's impossible to do anything outdoors. However, this week is a complete contrast and spring is most certainly here. The sun's shining and it's warm again. So in this episode, I have a few things to share with you, some of my plans for this channel. And in a couple of weeks to commemorate the sinking of the Titanic, I'm going to show you my personal connection to the Titanic story and an old house and a lost garden. So thinking about this channel, I was wondering what I could do to be different. There are quite a few channels out there who concentrate on how to garden, which is great and they teach you all sorts, but I don't really want to duplicate those. So I thought I would teach you about my garden style, principles and a way of working that allows you to have a stunning garden, but with as little as much effort as you choose to put into it. If you keep watching my videos, you'll learn my particular style of gardening and you may even pick up something useful along the way. I also thought that I would do a regular shorter video on different plants you may be interested in, maybe midweek, all in Latin. <laughs> so you'll need your notebooks ready if you decide to take notes of those, if you like any of them. I have a list of episodes I'd also like to make. Some are quite exciting and I'm looking forward to producing those over the coming weeks and months. But however, back to this episode, it's a mix of different things I've been up to this week. We have a visit to the old churchyard here in the village to look at the wildflowers growing there. And you'll get to meet one of my baby trees. Not so much a baby now. I also took a video of a beautiful garden mum and I visited on Sunday. A book review and other bits and pieces. I hope you enjoy watching. Thank you for your kind comments and support for this channel. I think I'm gradually getting it together now and it's wonderful to have you on this journey with me, so thank you. So I'm trying really hard to film this morning, but there's some seagulls over there and they keep it yattering and yattering, <laughs> so I can't actually hear what I'm saying. Um, so what we're going to do now, while they're being quiet, is I'm going to have a look at this old greenhouse table I used to have at home. Now it's, um, I suppose you call it staging really, and I'm going to reuse this here as a table for keeping plants and things on, next to the compost area. I'll do as a storage area away from the ground, hopefully plants I keep on there will like the shade and they'll be less affected by slugs and snails because they're higher up. So let's see how it goes. Well, as you can see, I've put the legs back on the old table. It's a little bit ramshackle, a little bit rotten here and there. So what I'm going to do next is with this polythene, I've got a, a better piece over there. Let's cut it and fasten it onto the table. And that will stop water getting into these rotten parts here. Let it may last a bit longer. And then I can use this as an outdoor potting bench, which is a really good idea. Because I'm quite tall, it's just about the ideal height for me. So it'll save backache and then make use of uh, an underused corner. And I get to smell the lovely fresh compost. Mm. <laughs> so there you can see I've put some polythene on the top and cut it down. And I'm going to fasten it round and fix it with some screws. I'm not sure how it'll hold, but it'd be better than taping it. And I've got a piece of wood there to put on the back, which will secure it a little bit better. So all the water will pour off. It's already got holes in it anyway, so that should help with drainage. So I think it should be really good when it's done. So let's wait and see. So as you can see, the potting bench is all finished. I've fastened the plastic down with some screws. I hope that'll hold. I've got some pots there I'm going to use for potting on. I've just potted up the Camelinias Calastis, beautiful blue plant. It's really, really useful, this. It's cost me absolutely nothing, apart from a bit of time and the materials are already available, I had them spare. So yeah, you can make anything out of something if you've got the bits and pieces there. I encourage people to be imaginative with their approach to gardening and it'll save you money and it's just as useful. And actually, I quite like the rustic look. It's a little bit random, but it has a kind of rustic charm to it.
and look who it is. This is a little tree I grew from a horse chestnut seed many years ago. It's from one of the parent trees in the same old churchyard, so it's in good company. As you can see, it's got to a fair size now, and I look forward to seeing it grow even more and start to flower. I've just had a parcel delivered from the postman. Have a look inside. Oh, look. This is what I wanted. I had some last year, but I lost them. This is a beefsteak plant, or also known as Irisine herbstii. Now, this is a tender plant, so it needs to be away from frost. So what I'm going to do is take this out, put it into a pot with some nice compost, and put it in the house so it can grow on and become beautiful. And when it's a bit bigger, I can take lots and lots of cuttings from it and keep them going. So yes, I'm looking forward to seeing this grow during the summer months. And here it is in the little pot. You'll have to excuse the banging next door to having some building work done. So yes, here it is. Some nice peach-free compost. And that should grow really, really quickly and look gorgeous. Well, it's been a very wet day again. I've come into the garden room this evening because there's the only chance I've had really to do any filming. Not for want of trying, because it has been so wet this afternoon and there's been quite a lot of noise nearby with building work going on. So what I want to do is show you a few plants I've got on the weekend. Now, I'm going to start with this one here. This is a lovely plant. It's called Persicaria amflexicolis alba alba meaning white so this is a really nice plant it grows in most conditions it doesn't like it too dry it thrives in wet conditions and it'd be um, a medium height with white little flowers on long stems i shall put a picture on for you to see i also got this one here which is one of my all-time favorites this is a cephalaria gigantea now somehow i've taken the label out I don't know where I put it, but yeah, it's lovely. It's a bit like a scabious, but it will get to maybe five or six feet even more with the flower stems, like a pinned cushion flower with um, yellow colour. Really, really good for butterflies and bees. And you can have it in a smaller garden because it's only the flower stems that get to that height. The next one is one of my favourites. I absolutely love pulmonarias. Now, this one is called Pulmonaria David Ward. I shall put the writing on as well. It's a lovely variegated variety, as you can see here, and the dainty little light pink flowers, which really would light up the border in the springtime. A really welcome bit of colour after the long winter. And the next one is quite a few. I did go a bit mad at the garden fair. This is another one of my favourites, but this is a this will flower and die this year. So I don't think it's biennial or annual. But it's a Silibum marianum, really good name, Silibum. <laughs> and it's very, very prickly. Now this will get about three, four feet maybe. And it has lovely spikes of flowers, purplish flowers, look like a thistle. And really, really sharp and prickly. So if you want this one in your garden, you have to be prepared to put up with that. But it's worth it. And they have lovely seed heads and they all float around when it's windy later on. Another one. Now this is another pulmonary I got. Now this one was um, bought from a specialist nursery, nursery and it's called Pulmonaria Barfield Pink. And then what I liked about this one, you can see the flowers are stripy, which is a little bit unusual. And I thought, yeah, that's really nice. The leaves aren't anything to sing and dance about, but they're not spotty either. But I thought that was really, really attractive and just a little bit different. And these are the kind of things when you're going out to garden centres you don't always see because it's the specialist nurseries that grow things like this. Um, yeah, so they're really worthwhile supporting the nurseries when you go to these plant fairs and things. Now, another plant, now I did buy quite a few, is another one. This is a Euphorbia cross pasturii. Now this will get to a very big size. So this is not for my garden here. This is going to go to the old manor house. You can get, I think it said it one, one to one and a half meters in size which should be pretty big quite tall and have beautiful flowers that are typical of a euphorbia and i shall put a picture on of that so that's going to look really good and tropical and i do believe it's hardy well most of these are hardy should be and 
another one I bought from a really nice nursery. We just started up who this gentleman had taken on a nursery that had been abandoned or left or whatever, something like that. Cliff Bank Nursery near Harrogate, um, North Rigton in North Yorkshire. So this this is a a plant that will live and die this year. It looks a little bit like parsley or cow parsley, and it's in that family, or I think it is. Or like uh, Grandiflora. Now, when you see Grandiflora, you know it's going to have good flowers. I believe it's like Umbelliferase, which is like um, an umbrella, really. So that should look brilliant, and I can't wait to see how that's going to turn out. And this is going to the old manor house, too, because I haven't got much space here. And the next one, and the final one. But there are more outside. Well, I'm not going to make you sit through any more. Now, this is a new one to me. I think I've seen it before. It's called Glega Cross Heart Landi Lady Wilson. Upright delicate leaves and short spikes of pink and white two-tone flowers over a long spell in summer. It grows in sun and reasonable soil. Excuse that noise in the background. There's a road nearby. And it grows to 75 centimetres tall. And I'm really looking forward to that. And apparently, I did see somewhere that the flowers may smell of coconut. So I can't wait to find that out, colour of coconut. <laughs> yeah. So that's a few plants from today that I've bought. And if you want to buy me a plant, a little, I think there's a little option somewhere in the description, it's called buy me a coffee, but I've changed it to buy me a plant because it does help me buy plants from my garden, um, as I explained a little bit earlier. Um, did I did explain, no I didn't. In the description, on the channel description, it tells you a little bit about me and why I'm doing this channel and a little bit about my life. So yeah. So you'll understand if you read that. But yeah, thank you for watching this section. And I hope you really enjoyed that. And you might be inspired to get some of these for yourself. Last time I showed you one of my favourite books and I actually have another one. I've quite a few favourite books and most of them are to do with gardening. 
Now this one is based on a TV series which was produced in the late 1980s and early 1990s. It began with the story of the old Victorian kitchen garden. And the first series was to do with restoring the old kitchen garden to productive use. And the second series which came after that, which I liked more, which was to do with the Victorian flower garden. Now it's based on an old um, walled garden and the man who ran the show was called Harry Dodson. He was the last head gardener at the place before it closed. And so what happened, he restored the gardens with the help of a team. And with that, he showed his expertise, knowledge, and all his stories and absolutely everything. It's absolutely fantastic series. I think it's on YouTube, you can search for it. I will put a link down if I can find it. And it shows you how they did the Victorian bedding schemes. Not everyone's taste these days, but actually it was a thing in those days. It was a massive thing where it showed how wealthy you were. Now, the garden I look after, we do have some bedding schemes similar. And there are some old stately homes round and about nearby, which do a really good um, display. Truly authentic, high Victorian displays. Yeah, so this book is absolutely jam-packed, full of stories, how the gardeners used to work. It tells you a bit about how the sweet pea came to be, the cultivated sweet pea, which we know today. It tells you the story of that. It tells you the story of how the head gardener worked, what he was responsible for, not only just maintaining the gardens and ensuring the staff did the work, but also he had to look after the household as well, ensure there's fresh sap flowers for the house all the time. And in the big house, they often had another house. So in certain months of the year, they'd move to the other house, maybe in the town, and he had to send flowers and all sorts to decorate the house there as well. So it's a really, really good book. I would recommend it. I don't think it's been published anymore, but you can probably find it on eBay and places like that. So yeah, I really hope you'll be able to find this book. It's absolutely fascinating. It's a really, really good um, history of how gardening was and still a lot of things that we can learn from because they're the time and trusted techniques which we can use today which a lot have been forgotten so that's how I like to work if I can um, the old ways are usually the best ways but there are some improvements naturally as things evolve and before I close the book I just want to show you this this is an auricular theatre now auricular theatres still appear here and there when I go to the flower shows, there's often an auricular society and they will have a stall with all the auriculars on. Fascinating varieties, you know, green ones, black ones, yellow ones. The colours and the leaves are also different. So yeah, I really hope you'll be able to find this book if you can. And I would highly, highly recommend it. And yes, I'm not going to go just yet. I want to show you the picture of Harry Dodson. He is the man here in this garden, in this greenhouse, tending his plants. Fantastic series. So, yeah, so this is the Victorian Kitchen Garden, um, sorry, the Victorian Flower Garden by Jennifer Davis. And you can look for the Victorian Kitchen Garden too, if you can find it as well, because that is really interesting if you're into growing vegetables and things. Well, that's it for today. I'm really glad you could join me and I hope you've enjoyed sharing my gardening adventures this past few days. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. And don't forget to tell your friends who'd like to subscribe. That'd be really helpful for my channel. And if you celebrate Easter, I really hope you have a happy time. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye for now.